Uh, I've actually sent everyone this. Um, it's in order for us to reflect on what we've just done for the formative, so it's an exemplar. Thank you, um, Santi, for let me lick some of your ideas really mate um, so what I want to do is I want to go through this and moving forward what we need to start incorporating into our own writing and just reflect on what some of us might have done well and what we all need to improve on uh, including me because no one's perfect so I've got here an opening statement this is our argument again we need to stop thinking of ourselves as trying to structure writing or trying to finish a paragraph to make our teachers happy right and we need to start reframing our mind to think I'm making an argument am I proving my argument beyond a shadow of a doubt once we start doing that everything else will improve anyway so the first sentence of a paragraph is the argument uh, and in the context of language and literature, what we're trying to do is say, the text shows this, you know, it teaches us about the world, it teaches us about culture, identity, representation, um, any of these important factors. So in the case of what you've been asked to do here, similar to the IO, is like, what's it tell you about a global issue? Does it highlight a real world issue? And of course it does. The relationship between clothing expectations for women, women and limited self-expression. So that's the first half of our argument, what the novel does. It has to do something big, otherwise this subject would be a dumb subject. Um, and then we say, like, how does it do that? And we, here we need to pick, like, really a literary portrayal. I try to avoid doing techniques. I try to pick something larger, um, like, I don't know, character relationships or characterization more generally, uh, the setting and parts within it, the society within it, uh, plot points, scenes, something like that. So I try to do these larger macro or level two literary elements, right? So just to sum that up, we've got text does this, teaches us this through literary element. Um, and in the case of this, it's through the force uniforms of various types of women within the novel setting have to wear. So we've got to illustrate. You'll notice here I've highlighted all of our transition words. Now the purpose of these is to tell our audience what's coming so that they don't have to guess. They know, yeah, you've made an argument. Now you're illustrating that argument with evidence, right? So it's really, really important things. We say to illustrate and we've got the certain quotes that I've needed, small quotes, to show this argument, to prove this argument, right? And you'll see that, you know, I've got the blue and the red, the red being the author's words, the blue being mine. We've embedded those quotes. Embed, it means to tuck the words up, to tuck the author's words into your context, you know. So I've got this word here, prescribed, on its own, don't mean anything. We need the context of saying, you know, the uniform was prescribed to these handmaids by the society. That's the context, that's the background information. So the word prescribed makes sense. And I embed that or tuck that word in into my context. It makes more sense. And we can see I've done that several times here. Now, even if I take away the quotation marks and I changed all the colours just to black, it still read like one grammatically correct sentence that sounds like just one person, not two pushed together. That's the aim. So there's the evidence. Now the other thing you'll notice is there's two blocks of evidence, right? That's what we're looking for as well. We're not in grade six, we're not doing little baby paragraphs now, we're doing big boy stuff. Um, and so we've got these two blocks of evidence. So I'm saying forced uniforms, various women's wear, women wear in the novel setting. And the first half is about the handmaids. The second half, still the same argument, women being forced to wear uniform, but I've picked a different group of women. So that's how we're going to start splitting our evidence. The, you know, they both show the arguments, but there's nuance. There's two components. And again, that just helps to strengthen it because you go, well, I've not just cherry picked my first bit of evidence. If you look at me second, you can see other examples of this. Therefore, I'm right. Come at me, bro. I'm not wrong. Then after that, only after that, we, if you read the where I've introduced evidence, and no point have I said, oh, the author uses simile, the author uses diction, the author uses this. Don't do that when I'm giving evidence. I'm just trying to illustrate my point through the words within the text, right? It's only after that I start looking at the choices and I identify the choices. So we can see here, referring to the uniform prescribed, that diction, or we've got down here, there is a simile, you know, only after is where I start identifying the evidence. And I have to identify and talk and also uh, identify the choice, whether that's technique or just a plot point or act character action or dialogue, whatever. I identify the choice and I identify the effect. Does it emphasize something? Does it draw attention to a particular concept or idea? Does it evoke something? Does it make us think of or feel something in particular? Or does it imply something? Does it indirectly say? It'll do one of those three things. But you must make sure those things connect. If they don't connect, it ain't analysis. It's you identifying choice and then just explaining the plot, bruh. Don't do that. So we say here, 
you know, the uniform, the diction of it, it's prescribed. This implies it's immediately, if they don't wear it, it could result in death because one is prescribed medicine to treat them. And if they don't take it, they could die. So we've got that effect, the implications, and we've got the justification. And you'll see this for everything, you know. Um, the simile compares it to a surgeon's gown. Surgeons and hospitals are generally seen as sterile, and as a result of that, it kind of emphasizes that there's a lack of personal expression there, right? Like, so all of these choices are identified, the effects are identified, and they are justified, and they connect. If they don't do that, you're not analyzing, you're describing, don't be an idiot. From there, we need to look at the micro, the tiny little choices, and zoom out and think about what bigger things are portrayed. So, you know, by utilising these choices, Atwood creates this totalitarian setting where women lack the freedom to choose what they wear. Alfred is characterised as one such woman who reflects on this inability to dress herself. She's quite joyless. And you'll see again, I'm using transition words, this time, cause and effect. Because I've got my cause because of these, I never realised that, because, cause. Um, because of these tiny little choices, We've achieved something bigger. That's the effect. The bigger thing is the characterization, the setting, the tone, or the mood. Uh, you can see I've done the same thing here. So we want to use that cause effect language, right? And this larger implication, this larger interpretation of whole elements, you'll see is really what is reflected in my initial argument. Finally, we've got our big level three thing. This is what the novel shows us. And again, it should be reflected in the claim or the argument. So the novel's able to highlight the relationship between clothing for women and limited self-expression. But we want to then explain the message of the text. So we want to say specifically, it conveys this about that global issue, or it exemplifies it in this particular way. Uh, and again, we want to have that cause effect language. So this is what we want to do. So a couple of things to reiterate. Text does this through this, pick a level two thing. Illustrate, don't analyze, don't identify techniques when you're giving evidence. Just give the evidence, make sure it's embedded, it's contextualized. Level one, talk about the choices, their effects, make sure those things connect. If you say anaphora or repetition does something, don't then connect it to handmaids being oppressed. So, you know, the anaphora, the repetition at the beginning of clauses is quite monotonous, it's quite boring because it's repeated, which reflects the handmaid's boring, monotonous lives. Those two things connect. So make sure that connects, build that, talk about world building, character setting, tonal mood from that, and then end your paragraph with the conclusion. You'll see the same thing again, but this time with um, visual text. So the thing that looks different here, we've still got text shows us this about the world, conveys the global issue through this, through level one or level two. Um, and then when we're talking about the visual stuff, we're, again, contextualizing the cartoon features a young woman, but then we're gonna describe the things we see in it that we're going to analyze. Again, we're not identifying techniques here, so we're not saying, you know, for instance, the cartoon has a visual metaphor. We're saying the cartoon has a young woman and her, her hijab, hijab or her neck scarf, head scarf, sorry, comes down and wraps around her neck like a noose tightening, right? Only after I've presented that information do I say, this is a visual metaphor which compares a hijab to a noose, implying that forced clothing is suffocating her or even killing her um, self-expression, much like being hung. So this is what we want to do that, right? Again, from, from having that, we've got world building. The subjects characterize the suffering. The, uh, the, I, the setting she wins is one where women don't get the right to choose, and this kills for expression. The tone is this. My second chunk of evidence is going to be nuanced and different to the first, right? So this time I'm going to talk about the background the f um, or the facial expression. Uh, and again, I'm gonna zoom in, look at those choices. The red elicits the idea of violence, given its connotations. The darkening at the top conjures an oppressed feeling because it's heavier and weighing down. The subject's eyes um, don't conjure any emotion. The, the apathetic face, facial expression helps to characterize it like this. And as such, finally, again, we've got these transition words. I come to my big idea, my conclusion. I explain that it shows the global issue and I explain how and what message is conveyed, all right? That's what we wanna be doing, hopefully, we can reflect on this and crush it next time. Cheers.